So by default, when you run a query inside of community.riskiq.com, we're actually going to select the resolutions tab. Now what that is, is that's actually our passive DNS A record information. Now passive DNS is essentially a repository of historical IP to domain lookups. Um, and if we, we have to go a little bit into the, the technical details here to understand this data set, but uh, DNS, uh, domain name system, is essentially a protocol that helps handle uh, resolution. You can almost think of it like the phone book for the internet. Okay. And so I can have a domain that, uh, that is easy for me to remember, but in order for me to route anything online, it has to be translated to an IP address that then helps route it through the rest of the, uh, the internet. It's like when you tell Siri, call, call Joe, and it knows to call Joe. And if his number changes, you just update it and it will do it. That's exactly right. So PassiveTotal.org has IP addresses that it's pointing to. Um, now, DNS in and of itself, the protocol is ephemeral. Mm -hmm. So going back to our signals discussion, unless somebody's listening, that signal is not captured. And so what passive DNS does is it's actually a sensor that may live on the network or upstream, uh, depending on your DNS provider situation, and it's recording any one of these DNS lookups. So in this particular case, if I were to type in community.riskiq.com, that's going to be associated with an IP address. And that IP address is then going to be captured. So we're going to have passive total uh, community.riskiq.com associated with a particular IP address at a certain date and time. Okay. And with passive DNS, what we're doing here is we're building this historical repository that may be well over 10 years of information. And what's great about this is that the data source itself is able to show us these associations that take place that would otherwise be lost. Now, DNS has a number of different records. I mentioned uh, you know, that we in the resolutions tab are showing the A records. The A records in this case are really just the relationship between a domain and an IP address. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll cover some of the uh, other DNS uh, types as well once we go through the DNS tab. But for all intents and purposes, what we're staring at on the resolutions tab is passive DNS information for A records. So what are some of the other um, uh, signals that we can glean from just seeing what IP address responded on this domain on a particular day. is uh, What other information is RiskIQ putting together to give me more background instead of just the, the, the nuts and bolts, the, the, the number to the, the IP address to the, to the domain? Yeah, so that's a, great, uh, that's a great question there because passive DNS by itself, just giving you a domain and an IP address association with the time, is certainly valuable from an analyst perspective, but you'll notice on our resolutions tab. So if we go down to the very bottom of, of the resolutions tab, that's what we're looking at right now. Yeah, and, and so what we're seeing here is that there's a number of IP addresses and we've actually gone through and added some more information. So we've added geolocation information, we've added the network it was associated with, the autonomous system, and then the sources of which we got that passive DNS So we're data. enriching the information that, that we got from the traditional data set to make it um, a little more useful. Yeah. So if I were just staring at an IP address, it wouldn't be apparently, it wouldn't be really clear to me that, uh, you know, that they were definitely part of a different network. And so at the bottom here, you know, looking at the, the first IP address that ever resolved for PassiveTotal.org, um, we can see that it was on a digital ocean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, service provider. And that, you know, that was back in 2014. And then if we begin to scroll up a bit, uh, we see some of the IP addresses that got introduced in 2015 are actually associated with Amazon. Um, and what's interesting to note there is that we're able to kind of take a look at this, this data set and we're able to see there's a number of IP addresses, yet the service itself has always been in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that from a provider perspective, that passive total has only been on really two providers. DigitalOcean and Amazon, mm -hmm. and that it was on DigitalOcean and then it went to Amazon completely. And so we're starting to tell a story here. And what's really interesting is having the guilty knowledge. PassiveTotal.org, when we founded the company, was using DigitalOcean, mm -hmm. naturally. Um, and when we got acquired by RiskIQ, there was a point in time where we were transitioning our infrastructure to Amazon. Okay. And so there was an overlap between those periods of time where we were on DigitalOcean and Amazon to maintain business continuity. And then eventually we went to just Amazon, uh, which is what RiskIQ uses for their infrastructure. So it's, it's a nice uh, way of looking at the history of that domain and see how it's changed over time yeah. and how quickly it's changed over time. Yeah, we can see here, you know, if we scroll back up to the top and we're looking at the visuals, you know, these become immensely valuable from an analyst perspective because 
One, I'm seeing in the heat map that we have data for PassiveTotal.org. Um, and that's just denoted by the color. If there was no resolution history here, it would be blank. And and you were seeing no gaps. So like it's not just been up for a few days and then down for a few days and back up. So it's been consistent for the whole time time period that we have data for. Yeah, and what's also helpful here is as a quick visual indicator, if we look at the time bar, we can actually see very quickly that we've had at least somewhere around three years of history or something close to that. Mm -hmm. And so this becomes really helpful as an analyst when I'm starting to ask questions like, how long has this domain been around? How often is it changing uh, service providers? How often is it changing country locations? Uh, what is the frequency in which it's just changing IPs in general? How often are new IP addresses popping up uh, on this uh, particular host? And so those are the questions that you wanna start asking yourself, really looking at the data in order to identify any patterns that may exist. Now, will we identify like if an IP address is in a sinkhole or, or something like that? Or? Yeah, so there's not a, unfortunately, there's not a single registry for monitoring sinkholes and detecting them, but RiskIQ actually does keep its own repository of sinkhole information, and when available, uh, that information will be present within a tag uh, associated with the infrastructure here on the right-hand side under the tags column. Wonderful.